I'm Fiona Paltridge and I'll be joining you this year, 2018. Woo, it's 2018 already, who can believe that, um, for Soul Journey, um, put together by Annette. Thank you so much, Annette, for doing this. This is a wonderful opportunity. You're an amazing soul yourself. And Annette is the owner of the Art and Soul Studio in Harvey Bay in Queensland. And she has an amazing design team who are also just beautiful souls. And they've helped her put this project together. Um, they also have a little mixed media group on Facebook uh, called Soul Sisters. And it's a wonderful place for inspiration. Um, so go along and check that out if you're not already a part of that. So I'm going to... Um, unwrap my little present in a minute and it sent me a parcel so we'll do that in a second oh you're going to get to see all my bloopers because boy this is taking me a long time to get this out but I'm getting there I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable about it now and then I'm going to make a little project with you guys I don't know what I'm going to make yet it is all going to be intuitive you know on the fly could be disastrous who knows but I actually don't mind if it is because one of the things that I really promote in my art as my inspiration is to embrace your mistakes, to not be worried about failure. Because in our society, I know in Australia here, I don't know what it's like around the rest of the world, but achievement is everything. But what people don't understand is the process of getting to that achievement is what's most important. I am an early childhood educator and my passion is in infant mental health. And I draw my inspiration from the resilience to failure that these young children have that have been subject to trauma. And I find that if they can push through and they can, you know, bounce back, then we can too. And so when I'm feeling really down about my art or I'm thinking I don't have any mojo or my inspiration, you know, has just left the building, I think of these children and I think, you know, what would they do? What would they be thinking? And they would be going, just do it. Just do it, Fiona. Just give it a go. And so that's what I do. I draw from that. And that that's, for me, that's, that's massive. That's my huge inspiration. So I suppose um, in all of it, what I'm saying is that, you know, when you're struggling with your art or you're struggling with yourself or you're struggling, you know, just with inspiration, then embrace your inner child. Anyway. Let's get the party stuttered. So I've got this little package that Annette sent me. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <gasps> I'm so excited to open it. So let's see what we get here. I've got my scissors and <gasps> oh, we're ready to go. Oh, I didn't let you know either. I'm in my studio here. I've just moved in. I just moved in. I moved in in July, August of 2017. Um, but I feel like I've only just settled in because I've been so busy running around the countryside. Oh, oh, it's like a lucky dip. What should I pull out first? Let's have a look. Oh, it's irresistibles. Like they're literally irresistible. They are so irresistible. Wow, I haven't seen these in donkey's yonks. Oh, I'm gonna have to get my thinking cap on for that. Right, first challenge. What have we got out? We got, oh, some paper artsy stamps. Oh, these are gorgeous. Wings, I love wings. Oh, do you know, sometimes I just wish I was a butterfly. I just really do. I wish I could just, you know, I think it's because I work with young children. I, it's actually very acceptable to walk around with butterfly or fairy wings on for a day. Yeah, they're cool. That is going to be fun. Oh, it's a bit vintagey too. Did you see that look? That's like, oh. All right, what have we got here? Ah, a TCW stencil. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I should have showed you my paper artsies up close. Oh, it's got price tags all over them, but that's okay. You get that. That's my paper artsy stamp. See what I mean by wings and vintagey? Yeah. And my irresistibles, which are irresistible. That was meant to be a Robert Palmer impersonation. That didn't work. Uh, six by six stencil by TC, a double, yo. I love those marks, they are very cool. All right, what else? There's some paint in here, I'm a little bit excited about that. So the first color is, oh, I should have put my glasses on. Well, it's orange. Oh, it's Tangerine Dream. These are Dilutions. There we go. I don't mind a bit of orange in my work, to tell you the truth. Happy with that. Oh, here's the next one. Oh, it's Pomegranate. Did you see, oh. But having said that, how cool is that? Pomegranate. I can handle that. So far, so good. 
All right, here we go. And, <laughs> oh, chopped pesto. It's my favorite color in the whole wide world. All right, well, this is gonna be, I'm wearing chopped pesto. How funny is that? I match my paint. But you know, this is a great selection. Annette, this is a great selection. I can do something with this. I can do something with this. So we've got my paint, Dilutions paint. We've got a stencil, essential. I've got some stamps. And probably the only thing I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with is the irresistible. So that'll be a challenge. Let's go make something. Yay! I'm so excited! <laughs> Okay, so we've got this gorgeous little selection of bits and pieces that was sent to me. I've got the paints and I've got some stamps, a stencil and the irresistibles. And I'm going to be using my Dina Wakeley journal. I absolutely love the different textures. However, because it's a little bit easier to work on and because I'm not quite sure how built up this page is going to end up, I'm going to cut out the calico page just carefully along the seam and work on it outside of the book. Now if I decide to put it back in that's easy I can just tip it back in with a nice easy page tip which if I do that I'll show you how I do it um, but nine times out of ten because I never know when to stop I end up with quite a bulky creation so Oh god, my cutting skills. A little bit left to be desired, but that's okay. There we go, we got it out. So I'll just be working on this piece of calico here. But if I want to, I can put it back in the book. Now, I will probably build it up quite high. So it might not be the best thing to go back in the book. So we'll wait and see. Now, oh, irresistible. I'm not going to do another Robert Palmer, I promise. Um really cool stuff because what it, it's really water resistant it dries like a glue um, and I'm just going to try it on the material I'm assuming it's going to work we'll just find out but I just want to do a beautiful border I'm not going to make it uh, too pretty like you can see that oh it's having trouble gripping to the material already look at that see how it's sitting on the top but that's okay because we don't want the world to be perfect do we we can just squish these along here like this and join them together. I actually like the idea that it's not soaking in too much because to make it look really nice and rustic, what I might do a bit later on when it dries is come along and pull some of it off. So if I just go around the outside pretty quickly, because you know we don't have all day Fiona, look at that. And then you'll pop it aside to dry. And I don't think it takes very long to dry from memory, I, depending on whether you've got, of course, but I'm pretty sure within half an hour, it'll be right to go. Oh, that's a nice bobbly one, isn't it? Let's see if we can just... This little metal tip on the bottle is amazing. We need to put more things in bottles with metal tips. Whoops, that one went a little bit wayward. That's okay. So the other thing that I'm planning on doing on this page is a little bit of stitching. I don't know if I'll hand stitch or whether I'll get the machine out and use the machine. I mean, you don't have to stitch. I mean, one of the ways you can get away with not stitching is just by putting little dots along your page. Sometimes that makes it look like stitching. Look at that. What an awesome little border. Right, so that's the first step. I'm going to pop that aside and let it dry. And then uh, in the meantime, we'll do a few other little bits and pieces. So one of the things I hadn't anticipated when I um, popped the Irresistibles onto the material is that it had the potential to soak through. See? So what I've done is I've actually put it onto a plastic bag here. I mean, you could use a piece of wax paper or, um, I don't know, anything that's you know waterproof that when it dries, you can just peel it back off again. Actually, baking paper, that sort of thing. So yeah, I've just popped it on the plastic bag. Um, some of it has soaked in quite significantly. So I'm just gonna leave that because I quite like that look. Some of it's still quite raised. Um, it's been about 10 minutes and it's already starting to be like tacky dry. So it shouldn't take too long. So I'm gonna pop that aside. 
clean up my little messy area and um, we'll do some stamping and some colouring. You know, nothing too stressful. Oh, it's so sticky. All right. So all I'm using is just some basic white cardstock and the paper artsy stamps and I just want the wings. So I'm going to stamp the wings. Oh, if I can get into the packet. Oh, paper artsy, your packaging is amazing. Oh, there it is. Got it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just want like the wings here and I'm going to add them to some of Tim Holtz's paper dolls. Oh, some of your paper dolls. Love them. Using an archival ink because it's the best whenever you're going to use a wet medium. Probably should hit it a little bit with a heat gun before I do anything to it, but because I'm talking and carrying on and doing everything in between it'll probably dry enough for me to be able to paint I am not the best stamper in the world to tell you right now I really see look patchy it's always patchy I'll do a few of them and then I'll pick out my favorite so just white cardstock um, black archival ink and the paper artsy stamps and I'm going to turn these into wings on some little people Stampy, stampy, stamp. I suppose you could do them any colour, but I just love the black. Oh, gee, that one's cool. That's like a moth. You're just going to have to use the mothy wings. Uh, see how they go. This one here's actually got wings in it, so I'm going to stamp just the bottom of the design. I don't need the top bit. And then I'm just going to have to trim those little wings out. Probably helps if I ink it up properly. I took the auto focus off too because I went back to check how the sound was going <laughs> and I realized sorry that the first segment that I'd recorded was not good on your eyes it was a little bit fuzzy backwards and forwards normally I remember to take it off but I was just so keen I couldn't wait to get into this project oh I really like these wings these are cool I actually like this whole stamp I wonder if I can incorporate that into it somewhere <gasps> maybe that's what I'll do yeah Fiona you're a genius there you go you just get inspiration as you go along I've got a bit of a a bit of a mad plan in my head for what I want to do but it changes it always changes along the way I'm going to stamp a whole one of this because I might very well fussy cut it out I know I hate fussy cutting I hear you say but you know it is just so worth it sometimes I can't believe I said that but it is it's so worth it hey that's a really cool stamp paper artsy I'm into that righto so now we're going to give them a little bit of a paint. Helps if we've got a paintbrush. I'll be back in a tick. Now I'm all set because I've got my stamped pictures. I've got some water. I've got a paintbrush and I've got my paints. Right. Nothing like being organised. Hey. There's a couple of things that I really love about Dilution paints. One of them is that they dry really, really quickly, which is exactly how they were designed to work. The other thing is, is that they can be quite transparent. If you mix a little bit of water with them and I'll show you what you meant what I mean so you can lighten them up quite significantly and their pigment stays really really strong look at that isn't that fabulous so it's a little bit like watercolors so you can do either you could make it a really really strong pigment nice and opaque blocks everything out or you can actually make them, I'll just take them out of the sun there, or you can make them nice and um, lightly pigmented by adding some water. I mean, they do uh, disperse the pigment a little bit. I mean, you're adding water to it, so you kind of got to expect that, and it's not actually watercolour, so it doesn't have the same components as watercolour, but it still works really well for colouring things, especially stamped images that you don't want to cover the whole thing up. You know, you want to still see the design underneath. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I don't want to be too particular. I just want to be nice and even with the colour distribution. I'm going to try all the colours and we'll see what they look like. Oh, look at that rich colour. can't believe I pulled a face when I first pulled that out of the bag. That is amazing. I was never much of a purple lover. I mean, not that this is really purple. It's more like claret, really, isn't it? Wow, look at that intense colour. That is just... Why have I not had this colour before? What is wrong with me? Okay, so we're going to add that to these wings up here. So I'm doing them all different colours because I don't really know what colour I want them. And I have this box in my studio 
that is just full. <laughs> it's absolutely full of funny little things that I've, you know, started or put together or thought I'm going to use that. And then I've only used one section of it or, you know, none whatsoever. Um, and then I always find a little project to add them to. You'll be quite surprised what you can put them in. Great for journaling pages. Is it pesto greens? Just pesto green to me. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've spent 30 years changing babies' nappies. <laughs> Who knows? But anyway, let's give it a go. Oh, but look, see, the three colours together, now that I've done that, and I've lightened that pesto right back, that looks really cool. I like that. I might actually do the three colours in my main design. We'll see how I feel. See how I feel on the day. And let's do a little bit more of this beautiful pomegranate colour. Lucky, lucky. And one... I think we'll make this one orange because I really love orange. It's one of those colours you either love it or you hate it. It's a bit like purple. Um, girlfriend Sandy, my dear Sandy, she just... Anything orange and she's like, yep, I'll have that. Scarves, hats, handbags anything <laughs> she's easy to buy for because you just make sure it's orange isn't that right send your pants all right there we go oh this one could probably be a little bit darker you just give it so you just give it another coat if it doesn't if it comes out too light if it's way too faint for what you want you just put another coat over the top there you go dilutions dilutions watered down diluted dilutions love it so I did some cutting out I didn't think you needed to watch me cut the little wings out once the um, paint had dried. And while I was cutting them out, I'm looking at the other stamps on the set. And I read, like I realised there's this little story on the back. It's just gorgeous. It's such a beautiful little um, addition to, you know, looking at the stamps. And apparently this is one of the first steps. This is the Incan Dog. And it says that it was um, Paper Artsy's first stamp series launched in 2004. I was really lucky when I went over to Paris... Um, in April in 2017, so um, last year, I was really lucky to meet Leandra and Mark, and Mark and I yacked for ages. It was really actually quite nice to have somebody that spoke really good English <laughs> after having to speak to um, French people the whole time, um, and my other girls. I mean, they speak English, but, you know, it's always nice when somebody speaks your own language. And, um, yeah, they were lovely people, absolutely amazing um, company just loved what they did they had a little stand there at the version scrap but yeah um, I just loved reading that little story on the back so when you buy paper artsy stamps you get a little bit of a little bit of background loved it great great idea right now I've got my little paper dolls out I went for the medium sized dolls these are Tim Holtz's they're from the um, ancestor collection which are quite cool I could collect these little dolls I mean I, they're so hard to come by they are almost impossible. See, there's the smaller size, and I kind of put them up against the wings and went, oh, they, they actually work. Like, I quite like that. But when I get my piece of material, which, by the way, is still not dry, so I lied. It does take forever. They kind of get a little bit lost, but this is the, this is the time where we just get to have a little bit of a play. So... I'm just going to be careful that I don't smudge the outside because that's something I would do. I'm just such a klutz when it comes to anything that's still wet. Shocking. All right, so you can just see how um, a little bit of wing on, on the paper doll makes all the difference. Do I want this little dude sitting down? I don't know. I like these guys. These are very cool in her pretty dress. And I think she could have the purple wings. See, look at that. Oh, actually, you know, that doesn't look too bad with a small one at the top. I quite like that now. So does that mean that I want a small one underneath? Because I'm going to run out of room if I put a great big one in there. And we'll do some little orange leaves. See, there you go. I, I mean, I'm like, oh, no, I'll use the medium-sized ones. Because, you know, the medium-sized ones are the ones that we're going to need. The other option is, oh, and I found these rose petals in my garden from my roses that kind of dropped off on the ground. And look how perfectly the colour matches with the pomegranate. Very excited. So I might use those as well. So what I was saying is the other option is we sawing it around. We do go for the bigger size. And instead of going vertical, we go horizontal with the design. 
which I actually quite like. And I know that it goes in a book vertically, blah, 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 but you know, does it really take that much effort to turn the page around? And I might not even put it back in the book. I might not, which means I'm going to have to go for an up bigger version of Mama here. Oh, look. Yeah, that's looking good. That's going to look good. Do I put the dude in the middle? I think I'll put the dude in the middle. Look, I'm just fluffing around. I don't really need to. I'll probably change my mind 15 times before I actually stick any of this down. Which way do these wings go? I have to remember which way they go. So there you go. That's a bit of an idea of where we're going to get to. So I've gathered some bits of ephemera to go with my little paper dolls and their wings. I've got this as like an old book cover that I was obviously going to do something with and I've put a couple of eyelets in it but now I want some more because I'm going to hang some tassels off of it and this will be my centerpiece for my um, my little creation. Good old crocodile. What did we do without a crocodile, hey? Well, we used to sit there with a hammer and one of those little things again, bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Now look, I just go, oh, just put a hole in here. And I'll just put a hole in there. And then I'll just put a hole in there. I mean, how easy is that? That's just so cool. See, I told you I'd make a mess. Look, I've made a mess. And then get some, do I want the colors to be all the same? That's the big question. I don't think I do, because they're both the same color, so I might kind of change it up a bit. And I've got some, these came with the crocodile, and I don't think I've ever used them. I mean, I really don't use my crocodile very often at all. It is a very, very rare thing for me to pull out. Yeah, I'm thinking we'll take that one away, because I want to stay in those warmer tones. And I'll pop a brassy one in the middle. Look at that. Yeah, see, here's the old one out now. <laughs> you can see how crazy my brain works. How much effort I put into going, well, this kind of has to be symmetrical, but not symmetrical. You know, it's going to be a little bit random, but I'm going to control it. All right, so now, because I don't use this very often, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out of the way, because I'm guaranteed I'm going to ruin it. And I'm going to try and remember how this machine works, because now I've got to go into this bit. I've done the hole punching, that's easy. Now I've got to do the crunching bit. So one at a time. You guys got crocodile at home it's just it is a really cool machine but I can never actually remember how to use it right, so it goes in like that don't do it often enough it goes in like that and then I just push the bejeebas out of it I think oh yeah yeah that's cool oh was it yes yes that'll do just fine ha huh. all right so I'll go along and I'll put them in and then uh, we'll come back and we'll start building it up a bit